тяжелая. Welcome to Suzdal, to pure Russia. It's very cold today, and we'll have some fun. Join us. Alexander, nice yes. to meet you. My name yes. is Sam. Yeah, my name is Alex. Good to meet you. Alex. Okay, yeah. Alex. Good yeah, to I'm, meet you. I'm a tour guide in Sizdal. So I've heard that you're the number one tour guide in Russia. Yes, it is. Yeah. I am. <laughs> That's amazing. That's really good. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. How long have you been a tour guide for? Uh, as I remember, maybe for seven years, because wow. first of all, it was my hobby. Okay. And uh, so I'm a professional tour guide for uh -huh. five years. Wow, wow. What did you do before? So I worked in different spheres. Okay. So I worked as a journalist, I worked uh -huh. as a manager in call centers and in hotel complex. Uh -huh. And uh, then my, my manager kicked me out uh -huh. and I decided to become a tour guide uh -huh. because it was my hobby and I enjoy Sudan. Okay. I enjoy Vladimir and I make tours in Vladimir and in Sudan. Perfect. That's really good. So it's like your passion. Yeah, you, you really enjoy it yeah, like that much? Yeah, yeah, we may say so. Okay, that's really cool. Yeah. That's really good. Okay, what are we going to do today? What, what's, uh, what are we going to see? So we'll enjoy pure Russia today. First of all, we'll start from, uh, from Pushkarskaya Slavada. It's okay. a place where tourists come and uh -huh. they enjoy different uh, kind of activities. Perfect. So okay. you'll see. Okay, let's, let's go. go. Let's go. Нужны большие, вот на большого человека. Ой, совсем большие. А типа такой вид нет, да? Да, да, да. Вот это. Вот это. Сэм был не готов для реального русского лета. Now we are looking for gloves or mittens, but his palm hand is too big. It's very cheap. It's uh, something like how much? Less than five five dollars. Mm -hmm. Sam, how do you like them? They're nice. They're nice. We're gonna see. They gotta keep my hands warm. It's the most important thing. Thank you. You're, You're welcome. welcome. If I came without you, there would be 2,500 of <laughs> not 250. Because I have a special uh -huh. costume, and I got a discount for everything here. <laughs> so let's move on. You know, very often when foreign tourists come to Russia. They say we want to see three cities in your country. So try to guess what are they? What is Suzdal? No, Petersburg and Moscow. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And when I ask them, what about Vladimir? Because Vladimir used to be the capital yeah, of our country. Yeah, but they don't know about Vladimir. Yeah. yeah. Some of them say, what Vladimir? Uh -huh. Is it like Vladimir Putin? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I have this all the time. All the time I have this. When uh, when I'm home, and people say to me, oh, where are you live? I say Vladimir. Oh, Vladimir Putin. <laughs> Even it's a problem on the internet really? because. Uh, if you want to search for something, uh -huh. if you search for like by camera, Moscow, uh -huh. you're gonna find lots of places in Moscow. Uh -huh. If you write by camera, Vladimir, uh -huh. it will say Vladimir Putin has camera. Vladimir Putin <laughs> likes camera. <laughs> Vladimir Putin is a camera fan, like this. Yeah. So speaking about the history of this place, uh, first of all, it wasn't a city. There was no fortress. There were no any fortification hill. First of all, it was just area, and it was called Sujdali. So people, Sujdali, Sujdali, Sujdali. Okay, okay. Yeah, so people can't understand what what does it mean. So uh -huh. there are several versions. Some of them say that it could be a uh, good black soil area uh -huh. because Sujdali is situated uh, on Aporia. So Aporia we can translate by like field area. And it was a very nice place for agriculture, for uh -huh. farming. So that's why later such, such cities as Suzdal, Vladimir uh -huh. and Yuri Polsky, they were built around this field area uh -huh, to okay. protect it from the enemies. Okay. So from the right side, here is the rampart, which was built in the beginning of the 12th century. Okay. And here is Suzdal Kremlin. 
many years ago it was a rampart and there was uh -huh. an old fence above it. Okay, okay. And it was enough for defend, mm -hmm. for, to, to defend. So this would have gone around the whole town or? It was a small piece of land. Okay. So this rampart was just one kilometer and uh, 400 meters. Okay. And it was, we may say, the heart of the city. Uh -huh. Then there was another circle. It was called Passat, or okay. like a quarter where handcraftsmen and merchants lived. Okay. And then there were several monasteries which were around the city. Okay. They were also built for protection. Not to Christianize people, but to protect them from the enemies. Okay. So if it was attacked, for example, this this was like a closed door, yeah? Yeah. It was closed door. Yeah. Oh okay. So it went around the whole city like this, yeah? This. Yeah, it was okay. closed and there were three entrances, three gates. Oh okay. Uh okay. so there was built and it was surrounded by river from three sides. Uh -huh. And here was a moat filled with water. Ah, okay, okay. So Vladimir was built after Susan. So we may say that it's this, the same period. Okay. okay. Speaking about uh, the time where Vladimir was found. So some people say that it was found uh, in the end of the 10th century. Okay. By Vladimir the Red Sun when he baptized this principality. Uh -huh. But the fortress itself appeared also in the beginning of the 12th century. So uh -huh. Vladimir Monomach, uh, he was prince from Kiev. He surrounded small areas by the rampart to protect this area from the enemies to protect Apollia, uh -huh. as, I, as I told. Was it attacked? Was the fight? Was the yeah? Yeah, yeah. It was attacked uh, several times. So uh, principalities, they didn't uh, have good relationship with each other. They they fight all the time. Uh -huh. And in the beginning of the 13th century, Vladimir and Suzder were attacked by uh, nomad tribes, by oh, Mongols. Okay. But Uhan came here. And uh, all the cities they were burned. Oh wow, well, well, okay. So different principalities and in the beginning, sorry, in the middle of the 12th century, we had 15 principalities. There was no uh, united country. For example, it was uh, Rostov and Suzdal principality, Kiev, Kievan principality, uh, Novgorod principality and some others. But one prince, he was in Kiev, and all the princes they wanted to be great Kievan prince. Because capital was in Kiev, now it's territory of Ukraine. And Vladimir and Suzdal, they were very far away. They uh -huh. were somewhere in the northwest part of the country. Uh -huh. And Vladimir was called Vladimir Zaleski. You can translate it like Vladimir and the forest. And it was, good. It was protected by forest and uh, roads. Roads were along rivers. But in the winter period, the river itself became uh -huh. like a highway. Uh -huh. Oh, wow, well, yeah. Very uh -huh. wide. And the people used uh, sledges and uh, Mongols. They decided to come to come here in the winter uh -huh. because all the cities they were situated along the rivers. Okay, of course, yeah. Yeah, so it's a big road which connected one city with another. Да, красивый свет. It's very, very beautiful today. Here are two churches, and one of them is uh, this church is in use. Uh -huh. And also, here is a, an icon painting studio here. Oh, wow. So, the priest works here and he makes icons in old Greek technique. Uh -huh. So, it is Greek called technique. Okay. Greek technique, yeah, and it's, uh, it is called encaustic. They use natural minerals, they grill it with wax, mm -hmm. and then they paint. Wow. And this wax it protects the painting, so they ah. write that the guarantee is 500 years. Wow. So we can go inside and okay. to see how they make them. Wow. So they have any that are 500 years old or not? Sorry? Do they have any that are 500 years old so you can see if they're still No, uh, <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> the 18th century wow. and now it's an icon painting studio so the priest who works here he also makes icons.
seconds. Okay. So he works in old Greek technique, which is mm -hmm. called encaustic. Mm -hmm. He uses natural minerals. So here you can see. Uh -huh. uh, I don't remember how they will be in English. Here is uh, lazurite. Is it correct to say? Mm, I don't know. Lazurite Never, in it's Russian. The first time I've heard of it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so lazurite in Russian. Uh, Melachite. So green. Okay. So they take some stones. They grind them. Okay. Yeah, they okay. grind it. Uh -huh. Then they mix it with wax mm -hmm. and paint. Oh wow, okay, so interesting. So this wax, it protects the painting uh -huh. and the right that the guarantee on the icons is 500 years. It's interesting to see if after 495 years, you, the person will be able to get their money back or not. It's, <laughs> who knows? Because uh, everything is changing. Are, right? These are the uh, icons they're making? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so well, now they are, they are in process. Ah, well, and they usually okay. make uh, family icons. Okay. For example, it could be uh, father, mother and their child. Okay. So, and these icons we can see in the showroom. It is over here. Okay. So, they're ordered by somebody especially, yeah? So, people come and say, we would like you to make them for Yeah. yeah like it. Okay. So, they can, uh, for example, buy okay. the icons they have. Uh -huh. or they can order them. Wow. So here is the showroom mm -hmm. and in old churches mm -hmm. we had arrow uh, windows. All right. Mm -hmm. to, to shoot out of, yeah? Yeah. Okay. okay. But uh, those churches, they were rather dark. Mm -hmm. So in this technique you see that it helps to be icons uh, visible. Mm -hmm. Because they reflect ah, the light. Reflection. Okay, okay. And ah. now it's dark here, but you can see what is, what is here. Ah, that's the reason. I didn't know that. Wow, okay. So and this uh, priest, uh, Andre, he's mm -hmm. the only one painter in the world mm -hmm. who works in this technique. Wow! Is so there a big demand for icons like this, or what is demand? Demand like uh, lots of people want it. So oh. some people don't know about well, this. Know about it, maybe. Yeah, because oh, yeah. Okay. you see, he's he's not in uh -huh. Moscow on mm -hmm. Tverskaya Street, uh -huh. okay. but he is in Suzdal in small church. Uh -huh. He has family, and mm -hmm. he works and he paints. He has some orders for from customers uh -huh. and so on. Well, cool. So we can make an advertisement for them. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> maybe everybody in the world will want it. They just don't know about it yet. Yeah. Wow. Well, okay. Come to Suzdal uh -huh. and enjoy these icons. And if you want to order one, how you can. Uh, if you want to have one made, you may you may Google it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, and they have they have their own website. Okay. This icon painting studio is called Sophia. Sophia. Okay. So it's possible to find them in internet. Okay. Facebook, VK, Instagram. Okay. So, okay. so this market square used to be a market square for 800 years. Ah. Okay. Because Suzdal was situated on crossroads. Mm -hmm. And one road connected the north and the south part of our country, the Baltic Sea and the Caspian Sea. Okay. And it was called from Vikings to Arabs. And uh -huh. another road connected Moscow and eastern part of our country. Okay. And Suzdal was situated on the crossroads. Wow. And that's why merchants from different places came here uh -huh. and sell their goods. Oh, they met here and yeah. sold. Okay. Wow. And it was and it was really very very rich place. So wow. I would like to show you the picture how this city looked like 100 years ago. So it's uh -huh. a weekday. You see that just uh -huh. few people walk here. Because the market wasn't even working then, yeah? Or? Yeah, just trading arcades. Ah. And on the market day, it looked like here. Wow! 500 carriages could stand here, wow. and 200 of them sell bread. Wow. Flour, wheat, rye, and some other things. Uh -huh. So that's why this square was called the bread square. Wow, wow. That's amazing. You ruined one of my questions. I wanted to ask you what's in the bag, <laughs> and now I think you have like yeah, a, different different yeah. things. Okay. And later I will show you something else. Okay. <laughs> so nowadays people still sell different things here, mm -hmm. souvenirs, and uh, for example, valenki. Uh huh. Did you try valenki? Does anybody ever wear them? Do you wear them or not? So I like valenki. For okay. example, when I come to my parents and uh -huh. uh, they live in their house, I wear valenki. They're really very yeah. warm. They're extremely warm. Yeah, but now I have uh, such yeah, high yeah, boots. Big boots yeah. yeah, they're also uh, very warm. They're made of dog. Oh, wow. Dog? Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> That's so bad. So, Valenki, they're really very, very warm. And uh, also, we have such, such boots over here. I don't know how they call it in English. We call them Unte. Ah, I don't even know if we have a name for them. They're also very warm. I have, wow. uh, I have a pair of them at home. 
when it will be minus 30 degrees uh -huh. and I work also in this extremely weather, uh -huh. I usually put on wow. Unti. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, I never saw them before even these. I should have bought them instead of these. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. What is the price for your boots? Uh, 13 they cost. 13 what? 13,000 rubles. 13,000 uh -huh. rubles? Uh -huh. Are you crazy? <laughs> Do you know what is the price for them? How much? Сколько стоит пункт? You see? Uh -huh. 3,600. Uh -huh. But you could buy three pairs of them. Yeah. Yeah. Or even four. four yeah. yeah. So guys, don't waste your money. Uh -huh. Don't buy shoes like this. Uh -huh. Come to Suzel and enjoy your real... Perfect. High boots. Unti in Russian. Unti. And you know that Valenki, they are cheaper. Mm -hmm. And they are pure Russian boots. <laughs> Seven, do you know what is it? Medavucha. Did, did you try it? I tried it, yeah. How yeah. do you like it? It's okay. They're very similar. Yeah? I found the strong one is the nicest one. I don't know if there's a reason for that, but the strongest one is the nicest. Yeah. So they have different different uh, kind of tastes. Uh -huh. uh, for example, with uh, herbs, mm -hmm. with uh, pepper, uh -huh. with horseradish, and so on. Mm -hmm. But it's a typical typical Russian drink. Mm -hmm. So we call it also mead, mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah, honey yeah, wine, honey okay. beer. So it's the same. But not many people really drinking it, yeah. I think it's just like we came here. We made we actually made a vlog about uh, about uh, medieval, uh -huh. but. None of the Russians we were even with it have even tried it before. Oh, really? So I think it's like a Suzo thing. Yeah, One maybe. Those, yeah. So it's uh, even such kind of souvenir. Uh -huh. When people come to uh -huh. Suzdal, they want to buy something from Suzdal. Yeah. And most of them buy Nidam. It's a strange taste. It's like kvass also. It's a bit strange. Like yeah. It's a very Russian kvass. Russian thing. Yeah. Yeah, kvass, but uh, with more degrees. Mm -hmm. more, more degrees, yeah. Definitely. The real effect mm -hmm. of Medavucha, so when you drink, your head is light, mm -hmm. but your body is stone. Uh, Soft uh, legs, okay. and you can't move. <laughs> this is like a, a lot of drinks in Russia are like give this effect. I think. <laughs> Although this one's good, the the, the homemade one is good always, yeah. yeah? yeah. But you can really uh, taste the alcohol in the homemade one. It smells a bit also. Uh -huh. can smell it more. Yeah, but today is very cold. You see it. Yeah. Pieces of ice. Oh wow! Inside. I was even thinking now. Oh, I want to drink some. I thought no, I'm driving on. I can't drink it here. Never mind. The boys are still mine. The fun, yeah. It's a balance. It's good. Oh. Она не кусается. Ее можно погладить? Она кому? Стой, Бриана. Ой. Она кусается? Нет, можете погать какие-то. Можно? Конечно. Можно я тебе погнать? Смело, смело. Ой, ты какой хороший. So, you see, uh, here is a nice guy. Hello. <laughs> His name is Piotr. And uh, Piotr makes uh, soap himself. Different kind of soap in tradition uh, Russian technology, we may say. Piotr, could you tell us about у нас мыло есть двух сортов. По традиционному русскому рецепту, это на говяжьем касторовом масле с разными добавками, и по восточному европейскому рецепту на оливковом масле. Вот. Ну, собственно, есть мягкое мыло для бани. Ну, сейчас оно используется как для бани. Это более такое древнее, более старое мыло. То есть изначально оно было все в такой в виде пасты. Uh -huh. вот. И уже позже, когда <coughs> химическая промышленность шагнула вперед, мы уже стало твердое. Да? Давай я помню. Я в бане часто хожу тогда. Ну, да? а, так, значит, есть с травами, uh -huh. с пряным ароматом и с водорослями. Сейчас замерзло, оно потом. Интересно. Давай, вот давай такое попробуем. Uh -huh. Давай. Отлично. Сколько стоит? 300 рублей. О! Вот это да. да. Можно вообще вот О. шубу. О. Всем как, как боярин, правильно? Ага. Круто. So, where are we going? 
So we just walk around Kremlin. So some people when they come to Suzdal, they suppose it's Kremlin, it's uh, something like in, in Moscow, uh -huh. for example, uh -huh. or in Nizhny Novgorod. But uh -huh. now we are in Kremlin already. So when we pass the rampart, we get to Kremlin. Uh -huh. It's the okay. most ancient part of the city and now uh -huh. people still live here. So for uh -huh. example, here are different souvenir shops, uh -huh. uh, antique shops, but later we'll see how these people live there. Oh, wow. So tell us about this. Is this a... Uh, was... did people use this in the past, this transport? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Cool. It's really nice. Maybe it's not so so comfortable because there is no uh, heater. Uh-huh. No roof. No, no roof, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's a typical way of transportation uh -huh. in the 18th or 19th century. And who would... Uh, would they have closed ones also? Closed carriages? Or just the open ones? Like? Yeah. For example, if we speak about noble people, rich people uh -huh. or imperators, uh -huh. they had a special sledge with roof okay. and also with the oven inside. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, but wow. now we are poor. Poor uh, people. We are poor. Yeah. But we have uh, the... Fur coat. I don't know what it's made from. It Maybe is... dog again. No, I think <laughs> no. that it's a uh, hair. So, your... Uh, the boots with the dog hair inside. Yeah. Okay. So, it's just to shave... They just shave the dog. They don't... It's not killing the dog and then it's a wild dog or I won't talk okay, about this. Okay. <laughs> I won't answer your I question. Was good. <laughs> oh no. Oh. Oh. Маленькая елочки холод на зимой. Из лесу елочку взяли мы домой. Сэм, нафиг асус. Суздаль. Пункты. Он говорит, я хочу Big Mac. What I can say, it's your destiny. Destiny to die on the icy lake. Yeah, in the middle, in the middle of Suzdal. I never walked on ice ever. Okay, I never did it. It would be nice experience. So you see the dog in front of us? He's a tour guide. Huh? His name is Chernish. Really? Yeah, he has a lot of friends in Suzdal. And he likes to join me and uh, my my tourists. So he's like wild living here, yeah? More or less. Oh, okay. People are feeding him and things, yeah? Yeah, that's why he's so fat, you see? He looks really And he has several names. He's Chernish, it's like Blakey. Uh -huh. He's uh, Malok, it's small dog. And also, he is a pirate. Huh. Let's go. So this is ice. This is a river. Yeah. This is the river, and we're going to walk over the river now. It's frozen. <laughs> I've never, ever been over walked to the river before in my life. I'm always scared to do these things. So now we're going to walk over the river. <laughs> ice is really very thick, very wide. Yeah. Thick. 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 Yeah. Mm. It's maybe about uh, 15 centimeters. Wow. And it's safe to walk here. You see wow. the children walk. Uh -huh. And we also go yeah. like. Ah, okay. <laughs> we got six children. So you uh, you can't feel that it's a river. Yeah. So you just but walk because you know it's a river. It's different. You know it is like. So you see the people walk here, they cross it one side and another uh -huh. side. So two his eyes. Uh-huh. You may see that it's really... You're gonna look now, there's gonna be water coming out of it. Yeah, it's no, 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 it's safe to walk. I'm sure I heard it crack. How it feels, Sam? Okay, I'm gonna walk near to the side. So that just in case something bad happens. <laughs> oh my god. We're alive! 
Ориентируйся, хоть в тоне. Ну что, дорогие друзья, сейчас у нас будет мастер-класс по огненному делу, то есть по ружейному и пушечному бою 17 века. На примере макета легкой пушки расскажем, покажем, как это все делать. В общем-то, артиллерия, как говорится, царица полей, появилась еще в середине 14 века. В эпоху Столетней войны впервые использовались пушки, и вплоть до середины 19 века ну, мало менялось. Принципиальных отличий не было. Что из себя представляла пушка? Это была труба, либо э, скованная, либо сваренная кузнечной сваркой. Впоследствии литые. Впоследствии, да, литые. Из бронзы, металла, чугуна. С одного конца труба была заваренная и, обратите внимание, насколько позволяет свет, было запальное отверстие, просверлено верхние стенки. А заряжение пушки проходило через ствол. Первоначально... Не знаю, насколько, это насколько это видно. Первоначально... Э, Порох засыпался с помощью большой деревянной ложки, тымбовался там. Это было небезопасно, потому что порох находился просто в ведре. Стоящим случайная искра могла лишить ну, всех пороховых припасов. Поэтому по мере развития книгопечатания и появления в большом количестве бумаги стали делать такие отмеренные заряды порох в виде таких картузов. В бумаге либо в ткани всегда можно было найти подходящую библию протестанта, либо католика, либо православного и использовать ее. Картуз отправлялся в канал ствола, досылался банником. Обратите внимание, как пучкари держит банник. Необычный прямой хват, а вот так вот. Для чего? Если от предыдущего выстрела остались не сгоревшие частички пороха, картуза, и которые могли бы воспламенить новый заряд, то банник, естественно, бы вылетал. Если бы Пушкарева держал обычным хватом, то вылетал бы банник вместе с руками Пушкаря. Так, конечно, бы пострадали пальцы, может быть, кожа на ладонях, но руки были бы целы. То есть техника безопасна. Теории были бы целы. Далее следовало запрыживать. В качестве пыжа обычно использовали войлок, ткань, но мы будем использовать сено. Также пыш должен быть уплотнен. Он, он уплотняет заряд для того, чтобы э, давление пороховых газов было гораздо больше. И вот э, цитата из э, стихотворения «Забил заряд я пушку в ту» вот как раз о том, что плотнее прибить заряд пыш для того, чтобы было больше давления. А, далее следовало бы, конечно, закатить ядро и вновь запроживать. Но у нас холостой выстрел, поэтому без ядра. Это все-таки макет. Это макет. Да. После чего... Артиллерист должен был через запальное отверстие с помощью такой проколки, ну, по сути, шило проколоть стенку картуза и э, слегка расшуровать, чтобы вот порох был на поверхности. Далее э, в запальное отверстие он насыпал мелко смолотый порох из такой специальной пороховницы, или как их у нас называли, натруски, потому что он натрясывает, натрусивает порох. И таким образом мелко смолотый порох образовал такой столбик в запальном отверстии, столбик пороха. И горку скорее. А на поверхности вот пучки на стенке образовывался горка пороха, который следовало бы поджечь. После чего надо было воспламенить эту горку. Делали это с помощью такого пальника, опять же, чтобы соображение техники безопасности близко не находиться возле пушка, крепили фитиль на пальник и на вытянутой руке подносили к запальному отверстию. Что, я думаю, мы сейчас желающим дадим поп попробовать. Кто хочет, милей, подходит. Итак, смотрите, вот здесь находится горка, горка которую нужно зажечь. Да. Становимся вот тут и на вытянутой руке подносим вот этот тлеющий фитиль. Раздуваем его еще раз. Берем вот тут и поджигаем. Внимание, выстрел! Опа! Пилей. Ну, как видите, весь наш пыль покойся. Да. Вот так сразу Это выстрел. выстрел. Но на этом операции не заканчивались. После этого надо было пробанить канал створола. То есть охладить его, погасить все несгоревшие частички. Это дело с помощью такого банника. Да, в случае, у нас здесь намотана веревка. Могла быть ткань, войлок, мех. Ну, чаще также та же самая веревка. Банник смачивался и 
очищался канал ствола для того, чтобы ничего там не осталось тлеющего. Сейчас, секунду, раздую. Так, хорошо, вот тут. Угу. Внимательно! Выстрел! Александр, Опасно. камеру убирай. Там, да? Пониже, пониже. Ниже, ниже, ниже. ниже. Еще, 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 еще. Еще. Отлично. Понравилось? Спасибо. Пожалуйста. Внимание, выстрел! Следовал выстрел. Примеряем. Меряем. Петель мег. Вложи. Полку крой. То есть открою ее. Угу. Внимание, выстрел! В какую сторону лицо поворачивай? Ну, в любую. Спасибо so much. Thank you very much for the excursion. It was, was really, really nice to meet you and you're really interesting and I learned so much things, so many things today. I've been to Sousa many times, but today I learned more than I ever did all the other times put together, so thanks. Uh, so I want to ask you if somebody wants to, is interested to come to Sousa or to Vladimir yeah. and to go on a tour, what should they do? How can they contact you? So there are several versions. First of all, you can uh, go to my website, okay. susdalgid.ru. Okay. You can find me on TripAdvisor. Okay. You just write susdalgid and okay, you okay. will find also my profile. Okay. And I guess that you will add some uh, links. Okay, and I'll put them in below the video, below yeah. this video. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. So, but it was your first uh, visit uh, as, a, as, a, as a tourist. As a tourist, yeah. 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 But uh, when you come uh, to me next time, okay. we'll show you something, okay. something Brilliant. interesting. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>